everybody in Butterfly and Karen and welcome to another um, table chat. Today I'm joined with Rick Leopold, who isn't just a resident of where I live in my community. I'm just going to get in a bit more. Also, he's also one of my students. So we had a, an interesting um, field trip, didn't we? We did. Yeah, yeah we did. Well, because I work with energy and what I do is I'm um, teaching Rick and training him how to sort of understand and read energy, etc. I thought, well, you know, the best training place to kill a few birds in one stone because I needed to visit a friend and go to Vegas. And so I thought it was a perfect, a perfect time to perfect place to go and read energy. And it passed with flying colors, by the way, you passed with flying Thank colors. You. I was really impressed because I was completely drained, as you could see. You were, very. Right, but right. I read so much more energy um, and I was absorbing so much from everybody. But you pretty, yeah, you did really, really well. I was quite impressed. So Thank you. I'm going to do, I'm going to pass somebody on field training. It's got to be that. If I'm going to throw you in the deep end, I'm going to throw you right <laughs> in Las Vegas deep end. So that's because that, it's Sin City. They call it Sin City yeah. for a reason. There's a lot exactly. of negative toxic energy there, as you know. Um, hi, Foo Foo. There's all sorts of energies. You've got your tourist energy. So you've got the accumulation of so much energy. But it was, um, it was interesting. Um, we may have a visitor. Hi, you want to come and sit here? Hi. But today's um, table chat really is based on Vegas, but uh, we wanted to just sort of discuss some feedback. Um, I'd like to get some feedback on what you're experiencing, but I also obviously want to talk about Las Vegas itself because this is part two um, and this is season two, episode five. But um, I'm thinking like I was, I had an interesting you know, again, energy, energy connecting to energies. It was just for some, some of it was off the charts for me. Yeah. As you could see, this is good training to understand though. And um, when you start really connecting to thousands of energies, yeah. you need to sort of do a lot of pre prep before you even enter the sort of snip anyway, Sin City. But, um, as many of you have seen, um, part one was with Victoria, and she's obviously, she's the local there, so she's given us the ins and outs of Las Vegas. I mean, if anybody's got, going to know much, everything or anything about Vegas and how to do it properly, it's that woman. She knew, it was amazing, like she knew everything, it was great, which again, you can go to the contents box and there is, you know, there's tips on how to contact her. Very so. much. I, I've been there a number of times and she knew a lot more than I did. <laughs> well, that's the other thing I wanted to ask was like, I know, I know you've been a few times and I usually go for the concerts and yeah. stuff, don't you? But what was so different about your previous experiences with... Well, you know, when, when I went in there, I, 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 this time I went, when I went there, I went in there with actually a different mind frame. Okay. Because I've been growing, growing, in, the, growing in the higher dimensions mm -hmm. from three dimension to fifth dimension. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been an interesting route, really, for about the last 15 months, I would say. Yeah. And it, it's, been a, it's been a cool ride. I mean, there's been some up and downs. I've learned a lot. This lady is really, you know, back when I was a kid, I knew I had something when I was younger, but I didn't know what it, and it actually scared the heck out of me. Yeah. And then, I, so I just kind of blew it off, and every time something like that would happen, I would just, like, back off of it. But then I started to find that, wow, I could use this for the good part. And not no evil involved. And if I did that, if I could control that, I would. And when I met her, which is a really blessing to me, she fine helped me fine tune it. And now I, I'm back on the right path, and I'm I'm happy as can be. Well, it's interesting because when we when I first got with Rick um, training, is now a mass is a, a master Ricky teacher. Um, you know that's just amazing, really. Like, but. He started off as a healing, um, just a healing client, and then obviously explained a lot of what he wanted to learn. And he was really interested. And you're gonna, I've had these abilities since I was a child, so I've sort of act, been active in mine anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's very rare that a lot of people will come to me and learn about this sort of thing because it's not something that's part of our educational curriculum anyway. You know, anything to do with parapsychology or abilities of the mind or any, anything to do with energy. Uh, paranormal science obviously but it all interconnects it's all just energy we're energy your energy we're all energy and you know as far as i'm concerned energy doesn't die it just moves to a different locations so when rick's talking about the fifth dimension it's just a slightly different dimension that's all 
But inter interacting with energy, I mean, the best ways to sort of interact with energy, whether you're opening up or training to be, you, you know, you're uh, developing your psychic abilities or your clear abilities, the the most important one really is is really tapping into your energies, yeah. uh, trying to read energies. Like, like when, when we went there this time, I really felt the difference than I felt any other time that I've been there. And I've been there a lot of times. And it, it, would just, it seemed different. And I think it was because I've grown and I, I noticed it more than I ever have in my life, and which is good to a point. But then some of the things that it, it does it kind of balance itself. You know, when you're there, you want to have fun and stuff, so you got to kind of have that balance in it. But it, it was it was a, it was a fun time. I totally enjoyed it. I call it um, pre prep work. I mean, do you remember a day or two before we were leaving? I was say the best way to get ready is to really tap into that light force and yeah. really you know absorb as much light force, bring it in, and really. You're going to need your, your energy shield nice yeah. and because when you go to somewhere like Las Vegas where it's major sin city, there's more low vibrational energies in human form than anywhere else probably on the planet, apart from Hollywood. But I haven't been there yet, and I'm not in no rush to go there either. But for me, Las Vegas is, is even a major tester for me to test my sort of empathic abilities and connecting to energies. And I remember saying to Rick, you know, really sort of for, for a day to pull on that light force, really boost up your, your energy field shield because you're going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did spend like a, a few days. I was doing my pre-prep, obviously, because I pull in a lot more energies. Um, but it was good because you kept, I said to you, if you can leave Las Vegas smiling, you've yeah. passed. You've, you've managed it really, really well. <laughs> yeah. Because it's and, easy you know, to feel too, that low vibration. And, and too, this was her first time and I, uh, I wanted her to enjoy it. You know, when we went there, she and she just out of blue asked me, let's go to Vegas. You know, and then she... And I thought, you know, what the heck? I got nothing else to do. So I'm retired. And I thought, you know, it, it was good. I hadn't been there in a while. So I went the heck. Why not? I wanted to test your abilities and I wanted to see yeah. my friend Victoria. And it was so like, pretty much it was it was a field trip for me, which was good. It was field trip training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it was like, oh, God. Wow. And it was intense. I mean, when we get, so when we go back to, so here's an example places. There's certain places that can have a lot more fair dimensional dense energy, a real buildup of low vibrational energy. And that can, it's, it, it has more to do with energy and people. Um, so the hotel we were staying at the Excalibur, I mean, it was great because we were talking to Victoria and she was saying, hey, you gotta, you got to watch the show, the Joust show and all this good stuff. Uh, obviously, when we go back again, I'll, I'll definitely look into that because we didn't really have time. But this hotel was so... Oh, it was, for me, it was not, I would not stay there again. Um, is it pretty to look at? Yes. Does it look exciting? Yes. Is it flashing lights? And Yeah, there, there's a small story about that. We, we had, you had to buy a parking ticket to get in there. Yeah. So every single time we had trouble with it, and she did it exactly the same time every time, what they told us how to do it. And the only time it worked right was when the final time we went out the gate, we were leaving. it just looked like clockwork. And I thought, you know what? This, I'm yeah. never going to ever stay at that place again. Never. Yeah. And I went down to Gamble one time and my favorite, I, I like playing the roulette machine. I go down there and they got an out of order sign up. Come on, what the heck? You know, you guys are here to make money. Do it, I fix know. it. No bingo either. Though. Nothing worked. <laughs> I mean, the food was mediocre at best, yeah. you know, but then, but then we went over and we went to another place. Everything that you can see, the whole atmosphere changed. Was it the Everybody, Gold Coast? Huh? Was it which Gold Coast? Gold, I think it was the Gold Coast where they had the, the casino, Gold Coast Casino. Yeah. Where they do the bingo. That was completely different energy. <laughs> to me, it was everything was okay to sleep there. I mean, the beds were okay, the rooms were okay. No, not really. It was but quite, as far as the, quite shy, actually, the energy was there, there. The, the people who worked there were kind of blah. I mean, n nothing was as hyped as up as what was it, the Gold Coast. No, I mean, my, my first impressions of the rooms was like, okay, why do I feel like I'm in Spain um, <laughs> on a on a party holiday, right, where it, they're just cleaned. That's it. They don't, there's nothing special about them because they're probably going to get trashed. And there was no coffee maker or anything. And it's like, there's no basic sort of anything apart from the bed and TV. And, uh, okay, that, that was it. That was so... Usually when you sort of go to a resort or somewhere like that, you expect a few amenities, like a little mini fridge. Especially somewhere in Las Vegas, I'm not being funny. It's hot right now, it's monsoon. It's like 100, 
15, etc. Oh, yeah. So and I'm on thinking, season two. Well, I'm on season two, but at the same time, it's like, okay, there could have at least be a mini fridge. Um, yeah. Coffee machine. Just a little cafe, you know. We all like to wake up having coffee. It's like, oh, nothing. It was just so basic and... I don't know. I just I wasn't feeling any way when I, when I was checking in. But again, going back to the car parking situation, this was so effing annoying. Um, quite simple instructions: use the app, download the app. That's it. Take a picture of your your ticket, and all you need to do is when you go to the machines, when you're leaving, come in and go in, just scan it, right? And that's all you need to do. Don't take a ticket because they'll restart the whole. They'll start charging your account, and I was like, okay. Don't use it. Don't take a ticket. Just use your phone. That's what we did. Oh. <laughs> so, scanning it, nothing. So we have to call a button. I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm not leaving the hotel, but I'm trying to sort of leave to drive around. Can you scan it? Yeah, I just did that. It's not working. That's why I called you. Uh, you not to take a ticket. Well, I was told not to take a ticket because it will start the recharging process. You need to take a ticket if you want to leave. It was that disgusting mm -hmm. attitude. I'm like, okay then. So I took a ticket, and obviously then the, then they let then it wasn't the ticket that let me out. It was them. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. And then it was, and that's what it was like in and out, in and out. Even just getting in, you need to, it, it it wasn't working. You need to take a ticket. I can't take a ticket because you keep telling me not to take a ticket. <laughs> it's like it was just idiotic, right? That was really bad communication. Uh, competence in that, or whoever designed that system was just off the charts anyway, but it doesn't, it doesn't work. Then you have the elevator. Oh, the elevators were a nightmare. I mean, right out of the gate when we, I think the first time we went up there. Yeah. Okay, we were on a, we were higher up there, so we were going up to our floor. Well, somebody had pushed a button in between before we got there on the outside to get into the elevator. So anyway, they get in. And most elevators I've been in, whoever punches in first, that's where they go up, when they go up, and then they come back down. Well, this one was, I think, was like, the, I don't know what, if, I'm going to say 12th floor, because I don't really remember. They got in on the 12th floor, and then we go back down. Yeah. Well, we were up higher than that. We had to yeah. go up higher than that. And I was like, what the heck is this? So, I mean, from the elevators to the parking system, well, even when it, was, I was, it was a nightmare. Even I mean, when I was putting the, the room key on that little, you know, okay, let me try this, and then press the button. You know, because now it's a system, it's a new security system where you have to use your key to activate yeah. the elevator. First of all, that's something you should tell your guests straight away at the reception, right? Every, nobody is just going to know that. They're going to just press the button, right? And that's it. And just use a key to get in. Everything is nonsensical. So when well, the security guy pops his head in and I said, why are we going down when we're trying to go up? And I'm like, just in the button is like, you need to use your key. Just that attitude again, I'm like, I already did that on the other side, didn't I? And I, I went, well, I tried that, but that didn't happen. Then it started working. The problem is, even though you use your key, you've got to press the button and then hold it. It didn't tell us that, though. And neither did the reception. So now we've figured out how to use the elevator to go up rather than go down or just go where the elevator wants to take us. But now we have to re remember, oh, we have to hold the button, too, for... It was just, yeah. that's not how you so, I mean, manage from he, security at all. From here on out, I, I, I'm going to go to Boyd gambling places now and stay there. They, I mean, the Gold Coast was one. Uh, Orleans is another one. They got another one down on Fremont. Mm. So when I go there, I'm going to go stick, stick with Boyd and not go to MGM. Oh, like Boyd Resort rewards yeah. and stuff, yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not interested in the MGM sort of crap. It's just... I don't know. I, didn't, I wasn't even silly as it was. Again, I'm staying at this hotel, and I'm at the bar waiting for my, for Vicky to come. And they didn't tell me that if I, because I'm sat there playing before I even ordered my beer. Well, I ordered my beer, and then I'm playing. Not once did the bartenders tell me that if you're playing, your drinks are free. They were just letting me play on the on the machines, and they were going to charge me too. And had it not for Victoria coming, who was a local, and she said, "Are you?" You're playing and I went, yeah, she went, well, you know, your drinks are free. That's how we found out. I'm like, no, they didn't tell me that. They don't tell you anything, right? Because it's just a scam. It's just a Las Vegas scam in every facet of it. So, see, you know, and by what she just said, I mean, it, they should have known by your accent that they should ask her, is this your first time here? Yeah. And then, and then they should have explained it to her. Mm -hmm. And then, but no, they're, they're there for the money, which is, you know, is it's what it is. Money. 
And yeah, because they're, but thankfully, like I say, Victoria got there, as you can see in the after hours version of part one. She's like, uh, you're not paying for them drinks. <laughs> she's not paying for them drinks. First of all, she's staying here, right? So you take care of your guests. Obviously, they don't. But she's not paying for a drink. She's playing on the board. And he went, well, she's, she, she used the board after she got the drink. <laughs> and Vicky said something like, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I just turned up. So, Karen, put some money in my machine. And I'm going to make sure there's, and I was just, do you know what? It was that, it was just, it, to me, it was like, okay, here we go. It's Las Vegas. It's a scam. There's nothing that's, there's, you know, if you go, you, for me, it's, it's, it's flashing lights. I thought it was, I came out of it thinking, well, it was great to see my friend Victoria. It was great to do a few things like Las Vegas style. Is it overrated? Completely. Is it, um, could you lose your soul there without in like minutes if you don't? And how to preserve your soul <laughs> or if you're just easily going to sell it yeah you're done yeah. um they call it sin city for a reason and the result and you know for someone like me as well you've got to remember because of what i do and especially when it comes to like sort of energy releasements and it's not quite exorcisms but it's not far off um i'm a walking demon triggerer <laughs> <laughs> so i walk around with all my light and i just trigger everybody's demons and it's just like well i mean i don't give too much credence to demons but what i'm trying to explain is I, people, I trigger people, and it's almost like they're getting a free exorcism when I'm sort of around. <laughs> it's like you're welcome, but they, you know, it's since it is, it's weird there. They, there's too much. There's too much. I found too much negative energies in people more than anywhere else. Really you, you, well, she, uh, you know, I, I know, I know. We, we went to the mom museum, mm. and she and she she's really into history too. And she, I knew she had a ball there going through that place, and then okay. she had a ball with the, I, Vicky was great. Yeah. She, I mean, she's a really blast to hang around with. And she knows a lot of stuff, and she's really full of energy and bubbly. And well, you yeah. guys seen them on the, the show the other night. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't checked it, was, it out. Check it out. Part it was one. Perfect. I mean, she was involved. She knew everything about Vegas. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was cool. I mean, a lot of stuff I didn't even know. I thought, man, but it was cool. Really, really good. Yeah, the mob museum was great. And you know, it's funny because when I was watching the history of the mob where it all sort of started around the country, but they are interconnected to Vegas. Um, that's when, like in the, is it 30s, 40s? I would have liked to have visited Vegas then when it had class. I mean, it wasn't much class even then, but it's a hell of a lot more classy than it is today. It's incredibly classless. There is, if you're going to Vegas thinking that you're going to find class, you're, de you're, you're deluding yourself. There's no class there. Yeah, and, and also that's in the same building that a lot of this, a lot of history in that building <laughs> itself, where they had a lot of, was a course which was there well it's like whether well, did the senate here and yeah. the mob yeah there was a lot of energy in there too. a lot of energy there a lot <laughs> very lot that was cool I, you know i, I enjoyed oh. it i enjoy you I've, I've been there before and every time you go in there you always pick up something you missed the first time because it's, it's three-story building and it's yeah. a lot of a lot of history in there you could spend a full you could spend a good half a day there to be Easily. honest I came out of there and I'm like, I'm ready to watch some mob films for the next week. I'm ready to binge watch Goodfellas and Casino and everything and all the old, like, uh, even Frank, right down to Frank Nitty and everything. So I'm really going to have a, so it was nice because I came out of that. Um, I don't know. It was, I mean, Vegas is different for everybody. Everybody's different, obviously. So, but for me, it's like, well, it was great to see my friend and I'll probably go back again and maybe again, because it's only four hours away and I'll, you know, I'll do something I did, do something different, but I'll preserve my energy a lot more. But could you pay me to live there? No. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't for me full time. I wouldn't be able to work. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed if I lived in a place like, you know, city like it's that. How they do it, I don't know. I, I, I give people credit for that. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice place to visit. It's not, I wouldn't even want to live there. I, I, I used to go there at the concerts and, you know, and then with friends every once in a while, but I would never live there either. I just, you know, it's not a place to live. I mean, you know, because there's, there's too much bad energy there, to be honest yeah, with you, is. especially now that I've grown and where I'm at now. There's no way in heck I could live there. You know, back in my old days, maybe. But now, no, there's no I, way. I personally thought people were rude. There was no need for the level of rudeness at all. I just, it was so weird. Oh, yeah. Even the people driving on the freeway, they they have no, they just, you know, right in front of you. 
It's like it's like a rat racer. Minimize, well, it is in most minimize towns. Minimize your anyway. driving in Vegas. If you need to start driving around Vegas, you need to minimize your driving. Oh, oh, oh. I thought Phoenix was bad and um, parts of Arizona, but no, they're actually they're, <laughs> Las Vegas drivers make Phoenix and Arizona yeah. drivers look great. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, there, I there's some great restaurants there too. We had great breakfast. Every every breakfast was great. We had at yeah. three places. We ate different places. They were all great. Yeah. You know? hmm. Actually, even though I'm not particularly fond of MGM Rewards, I am going to say one thing. MGM, what was it? Um, where was the where was the hotel we went to the MGM buffet? It was. Um, ooh, it was a big. That's where they had the shooting. At, yeah. Um. Mm. Ay ay ay. Ay ay ay. I know. It's Mandalay. Mandalay. Man okay, so the Mandalay Bay Hotel Casino. If you want to have a, a good lunch, uh, I mean, okay, well, make sure you get your MGM Rewards card first before you go, and then you'll save twenty dollars on your buffet. So mm. you're paying like thirty three dollars each per person for a buffet, but it's really good food. Um, you can just keep going back. I mean, it is. She also wanted to go to an English breakfast one day. Yeah. And that was as close as we got to an Irish. English, yeah, Irish, Irish yeah, it was an Irish. Place. Until I found out about the Codfather. Or was it the, oh, yeah, no, no, Vicky just said that's for fish and chips, but she said um, just to go to Cod, you know, yeah, Codfather for the fish and chips. And, um, yeah, she was actually, requ she recommended the Irish bar for the breakfast. Yeah. It was really good. Yeah, I mean, it was. I was. Black pudding and everything. I haven't eaten black pudding for years. Oh, it was so bloody nice. But... I mean, there are good places to eat there. Yeah, don't don't get us wrong. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not knocking the whole. The restaurants are fantastic. Just, you know, yeah. Most of them. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and again, like Vicky was saying, if you're going to be on the strip, you're going to pay more. Yeah. Um, if you if you know somebody and you know how to do it properly, like with her, then you do it properly. It's a little bit cheaper, but look for the look for the discounts and look for. No, really. I mean, bingo for me was just like the highlight of my evening. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was interesting to bingo. Actually, actually, that's the first time I played bingo ever. I think, but it was it was a, it was a fun night. I, I definitely enjoyed that part. I love bingo. And I thought yeah, I was within one a couple times. She was within one a couple times, but, on, no, but no, no, no cigar, no cigar. Thirty thousand dollars. Come on, come on, run the thirty thousand. As if I was going to win that. <laughs> no. one, one time I had to, I had a forty four. I had to get, and the guy somewhere on the other side of the building. Had a forty-five, and they called forty-five. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, then he made a lot of money that mm -hmm. night. So otherwise, that would have been cool if I had to hit that. But what the heck, you know? Yeah, if you're gonna, if you want, if you like bingo and you want to play bingo, definitely go to the Gold Coast Casino. Yeah. Every night, uh, we they, we were playing the seven o'clock, nine o'clock, and the eleven. Yeah, I think they do it for four hours. Was it five, seven, nine, and eleven? Seven, nine, eleven, 11. shows. And, and it, 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 it did seem like each the later you stayed, the more the pot went up. Oh yeah. So, you know, if you go there and you like bingo, probably the 7, seven 9, and 11. Oh, yeah, I'll be doing the 11 next especially time. Especially the 9 and 11, they're probably going to make more money. Well, just to, because you get, you know, you get free drinks. Yeah, yeah. And you get, you can, you know, you probably get to get some snacks there and stuff like that too. And you can just sit there and have a good time and, you know, what you're going to waste on the machines, you may as well, if you're going to take, if you're going to go to Vegas to have a good flutter, the way I saw it was, um, well, actually, no, it wasn't too bad because you're talking like 50 odd bucks for the first set, 40 odd dollars for the second set. Second, yeah. And then I think it was like 40 something for the third set, but we didn't do the third set. So you think you, you're talking like less than a hundred dollars. And, and you, they give you a lot of cards. I mean, we were yeah. playing six cards at a time. Yeah. And we, this went on for a couple of hours. Couple of hours. Yeah. Well, yeah, at least for an hour and 45 minutes because they had to switch time on times for the night. Seven to the nine frame. You got to get yeah. people out and then people back in. But it was it was fun. I I totally enjoyed that. And you got to remember, like that's less than hundred dollars. Mm. So you think about going on the machines. You could put you could lose hundred dollars in five minutes. Well, yeah. at least if you're <laughs> going to lose a hundred bucks, it might as well ever be ever the space of four or five hours of fun. That's the way I saw it. That's why yeah. I like bingo. <laughs> well, there, there, there's a lady on the other side of us that she went over six hundred bucks in just in one card. I mean, bam. It's like oh, oh whoa, man. God, she won again. Oh, yeah. I think she hit twice that night. Well, but it was actually, good. she she won like four times in the. Yeah. Oh, she won twice on the early session and then twice on the. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, that's oh, true. she just sat in the right seat. It's not where you sit; it's the tickets you buy. That's the, yeah. You're either lucky or you're not. Just the, but that for me, it's not always. I'd love to win bingo, but it's all for me. It's the fun. 
Yeah. It's all about the fun. And, you can and, have fun gambling. That, that might be as well. That. And uh, also, I mean, yes. you, I mean, the energy level there was, I, I was really cool and high. It was all peaceful. People were having fun, enjoying life. And yeah. where, where you go to the, some of the casinos, you walk in there and you can just feel neg. I mean, especially now that I've learned what I've learned. Now I can walk in there and I can, okay, this isn't quite right where I want to be. <laughs> and it's funny because, again, in the Gold Coast, totally different energies in people, like the staff, even though we weren't staying there, the staff were incredibly friendly, really nice. The energy was different. Everybody was helpful. Yeah. You know, we didn't have to be stunned at bimbling our fingers going, oh, <laughs> right? They just went, do you need anything? It's like, oh, yeah. They're, like, they're just that helpful. The, even the um, patrons were really having fun, having a good, the energy was completely different. Then when you went back to the Excalibur, you're walking through the casino to go to your room, you're like, oh, just don't look directly at anything, just keep going. <laughs> oh, you can, it's a completely different energetic feeling. It's just crap. And it's really heavy and it's, you can just feel it, can't you? Like, just, I just want to get to the elevator. Then it's like salt cars trying to get to the freaking, find your elevator. It's just like. And then plus the fact that they, their parking lot's like way out there. That's another oh thing where, God, where yeah. the other resorts are like the Boyd. Yeah. They're right there. I mean, everything's really handy for you to get in. And then, I mean, the, the Excalibur, the parking lot, was we had to walk a long ways. Yeah, if, you, if you're if planning on going staying at the Excalibur and you've got um, loads of baggage with you, don't. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to do like two or three trips back. And you're not going to be happy about the distance from the parking um, garage area to self-parking to your room, unless you're going to use the valet service, but... Um, well, you, if you've got screaming kids and stuff like that, and you've got loads of baggage, I would re probably recommend you, your valet just go through at this point. But if you're just wanting to sort of self park and you don't know any better, I probably wouldn't now. Um, maybe don't take too much baggage because you, unless you don't mind going back and forth, that's okay. Um, yeah, exactly. It was annoying, you know, it was. I mean, uh, you know, the, and we got off on the wrong foot there when, with the first thing going wrong with the get going into the parking lot and having it's going in and out of the gate, out of the resort area. Then the elevator coming around and then you go down to gamble and the machines aren't working. It's just like, bam, one thing after another. You see, when one thing is off and you don't get the right sort of help to fix the issue immediately and the very help that you just need the assistance is very negative, that's it for the remainder of your stay. If your response is negative, if the response, you know, the, again, mm -hmm. if the response from the staff is negative, your whole stay is going to be negative. Yeah. You kind of, and it's not, and it's not going to get better. And it really didn't. It's really, really busy. Yeah, it's quite it, sad, really, but there you go. I mean, even though we went to the to Gold Coast on, for breakfast on the last day we were there. And the guy, the guy was really cool. The guy, the lady that took us in was really mm -hmm. cool. I mean, you know, and she thanked us for that because we asked her how her day was going. She says, well, thank you for asking. I mean, just the courtesy of these people that work in these resorts yeah. makes a whole difference, you know, whether you're going to gonna like it or you're not. And they also get you on the right foot or the wrong foot. So what time did we go and try the uh, – we were going to try and do – was trying to eat at the uh, Excalibur, weren't we? We were going to try and eat in their canteen for their yeah. – Buffet. Buffet. What time did we go? And it was closed. Oh yeah. <laughs> How do you close a buffet? And they only did. They only did. They closed it at night, but you, they could go for breakfast and lunch. And they closed. It was at three o'clock. They I closed. Think it was it. like three p.m. Like okay, we're ready. And, for and actually, we were we were trying to find it about three ten or three fifteen. We we're just they passed the time they would close. And then we had to ask the lady, and then she says, "Well, it's closed. Who closes a buffet in, in Vegas? Yeah, in Vegas, right? You got to be kidding right. me." But so I mean the even the pool. Okay, so the pool area. <laughs> I don't. I wasn't. I didn't need pool time. I, we live on a, an amazing resort. We've got access to pool. We, those amenities every day. So we weren't going for pool time in Vegas. But we had a view of the pool. Granted, very nice pools, but incredibly loud DJ all day long. <laughs> right. So all day. <laughs> the longer you, if you're lower you are. I mean, I'm not that sound travels up too so we was on the 17th floor but if you're on a lower level you're going to have a noisy if you've got the pool view you're going to have a noisy sort of you know, day however i think was it like maybe 6 p.m pool's completely closed so there's no access to the pool at night like what is the point of that in vegas what if you want to go and sit by the pool with a, a cocktail all right yeah, that's they, not they had, quite a re resort is it you know? they, they, they had jacuzzis there 
I mean, a lot of people, I would, I would go out at nighttime and just sit in a jacuzzi and look at the sky. Yeah, I would have loved I to. I mean, have look at the lights. That's perfect. Like, I would love to have gone to use the jacuzzi at nighttime when it's a little bit more quiet. No, all closed. Like, what is this? Where's the sense in that? It's just supposed to be a resort in Las Vegas and you're closing your pool and all that stuff at a set time. It just made no sense. I, yeah, I wouldn't stay there. That's not my... Yeah, as far as the Excalibur, you know, usually most of the resorts, so you stay there, then they'll send you free nights. They could send me a week of free nights and I would never go back there. Yeah, you couldn't pay me to stay at the Excalibur. That's my review on that. I would definitely recommend the mob, if you're into sort of like gangsters and all that sort of history, the mob museum is great to visit. Um, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, Las Vegas, especially because now we know that marijuana and well, I don't, I don't say that stuff, but even though we know it's legal there in Las Vegas now, so not only have you got intoxicated party goers, people on vacation drunk, and trust me, they're not always thinking logical. No. So you've got drunk drivers and drug drivers. So you've got most people are under the influence of something. You've got to really watch out for them. And if they're not, and the fact that they're like high as a kite and still texting while they're driving, yeah, you've got to watch that too. Um, yeah, it was, and then reading the roads, you really need to learn how to read the roads in Vegas too. It was absolutely off the charts. Like this shit is nonsensical. What the, ah, uh, the roads telling me to do this. And, but if I do that, I'm, oh God, no, I'm going to go on the wrong way. <laughs> it was, I, I swear to God, it was really strange. Yeah. yeah. It, you got it. And, and then too, for, she did all, oh, she did all the driving. I'll be honest yeah. with you. She did all the driving there. And for somebody new, it would, it, would, it would be hard at night going left and right or, you know, whatever, in the turn signal. Night or day in, yeah. in Vegas, I wouldn't highly, if you don't need to drive as much, just try not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but then don't get scammed or ripped off by the taxis or Ubers and stuff either, because apparently that happens a lot too. Yeah. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword in Vegas. I mean, if, you're, if you can get yourself a driver or a limousine or anything like that, you know, great. But if you're trying to see places, I think by the you know, we're trying to drive it around and find places. To, it was like, oh, I've got to get off the road. I've got to get off the road. I've got to get away from it. these people are just fucking crazy. Yeah. They're just crazy. You know, you you got to what you got to listen to your intuition in that freaking place, right? <laughs> you can't ignore your intuition in Las Vegas at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, when we man managed to get, you know, when we got sat down with Victoria and we just got the ins and outs of everything, it's like so much makes sense now. But yeah, it did. She she was a lot. Victoria was a really good. She was a ball to be with. Yeah, she was. She was a. She really was. You know, I was the first time I'd met her, and I was. I'm glad I met her. She's a. She's a really great lady. You know. It's it's funny because we was there. We went to what we did try one of the strip joints. Um, you know, obviously because it's a, you know if you go to Vegas, you, you're supposed to go and at least go just to see dinner. Um. And again. It's this well, obviously, there's no class, there's, you don't go for class, but yeah, I came out of it re really re realizing like I, I, I came out of it, I'm never going to trust another man again, ever, <laughs> <laughs> never. And again, you could, if you stay too long, you could really lose your faith in humanity. If you stay in Vegas too long, you're going to hate humanity. So, um, there's that, there was that, which was really sad. Um, I had this guy throwing his money at me and why are you throwing money at me i'm here as a, i'm here as a freaking patron it's like take the dollars i went i don't want any fucking money why are you throwing your money at me i'm not the dancer it was and he's like and it was really weird and then he's like well just throw them at the girls i went i'm not gonna throw them at the girls i'll probably put them on the stage for them yeah, yeah. right you got these douchebags right <laughs> far too much money douchebags oh god how that I, but that's the problem right let's be real you see guys like this throw money around the wrong types of women are going to be all over him well not all women like that thank you very much and i'm just like i don't need your money hell no i don't need your money but because he was throwing the dollars <laughs> trying to give me the dollars to do whatever what with him like okay i don't want to i don't know what i'm supposed to do with these rick yeah. you know big fat what of dollars and i'm like i don't need you don't i don't need your money he's like give it to the girls or why you give it to the girls you know then he decided, well, that wasn't tempting me enough. So now he got the big wads of hundreds on. I went, what am I supposed to do with that? And he went, I want you to hold it. I went, 
you know what? Take your money and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I said, but you know what I am going to do? I'm going to grab that wad of dollars. And there must have been about like $30 worth of ones. And I said, I'm going to go and take, go to the toilet. And the woman that's washing my hands, what needs to wash my hands and dry my hands for me, I'm going to give her all of the dollars because she needs them off. Yeah. So I went to the toilet <laughs> and I said to the lady, and, you know, she's trying to sell stuff and she's, you know, the tips jar and everything. And I went, and I said, you really don't need to wash my, you know, dry my hands. She went, well, I need to because it's my job. And I went, okay, that's fine. So she's, I went, there you go. All of you, they're all yours. And she's like, what is this? And I went, some twat dollars. Yeah. Have it all. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out. And then the bouncer looked at me easy to say, she needs to leave. <laughs> she's not giving the girl, the dancers, the money. She's giving it to the, because they earn the dancers. Yeah. And they're not going to profit, so they needed to be rid of me like quite quickly. Well, you know, the, the yeah, dancers, the dancers make a lot of money anyway. With the other the people in the bathrooms, watch, you know, they don't they don't get that mega tips. No. So I mean, know. what she did was great. I mean, they, they, she probably made this girl this lady's night. She's like, I went, it's okay. She went, what can I give you for it? I went, I can I take some mints? She went, yeah, you take some mints. I just took a little tub of mints. I went, there you go. She went, is there anything else? Can I spray some perfume? I went, oh, what, what have you got? Okay, spray me some of that then. Beth, I said, and she's like, are you sure? I went, just take it. Just honestly. It's not my money. It's some moron, some douchebag. It's just throwing money around out there. So I thought you should get a piece of the pie too. Simple as that. The, 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 that's their lifestyle. So I mean, you, you, so you got you got first timers, and you got people that you know. That's what yeah. the lifestyle they like. Tourists, uh, tourists, it's different because like tourists come from all over the world, or they come from all over the country. And if they're kind of a, a love Aboriginal person in their own country or in their own town and their own in city, they're just going to bring that energy with them anyway. So again, it's, it's I'd say there's probably like about twenty five percent of the people that go there really nice, really cool. Probably some people that really live there are really cool, but you cannot you would have to stay away from the sort of you couldn't be around the strip for too long and it doesn't matter how much of a nice person you are you you would have to just you can't go there too much because you could lose your soul yeah you yeah. would feel it you would you would wonder why god why am i getting a headache all of a sudden what is this i feel heavy <laughs> that's how negative the energy is yeah i mean I, there's been times even even before we got in there i've felt it my baby actually came over here to you yeah. And you've actually taken it. Uh, oh, pulling that yeah, shit out. Pulled it out. I absorb all that negative energy and I just, I know to get rid of it. As soon as we got to Hoover Dam, that's when I said, start bringing it in now because we're getting yeah. close. So we're like 30 minutes away from Vegas, you're yeah. going to need a lot more life force right yeah. now. <sighs> yeah, you need to bring it in and just like, Oof. And you know, when we were leaving, I think she was happy we were leaving just to get away from the bad energy. I, ha I, couldn't, I couldn't stand it anymore. Like, just energetically. Was it, I mean, I, I had a great time. Again, it's not that we have a, I have a shit time. It's like a really good time. It's just, it, I just can't, the energy is just too much for like people like me. It's just too heavy. We can only take so much before we're like, I just got to get away from these energy vampires. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you know, I, I, I will say too that there's just been going there and coming back were the fastest trips I think I've ever made because we talked pretty much the whole entire, oh, yeah. entire time. And it made the time go really fast. Yeah, it did. They're really yeah. fast. We, and then coming back, we had some rain that we ran into a few times. And yeah. A beautiful lightning storm. Came into Prescott, had lunch before we headed back in, you know, back down to New River. But yeah, I mean, it was nice. Yeah. It was, it go was, in the back way and come, come down the, down the front. <laughs> it's nice. And Prescott's nice. It was nice just to get the... Prescott was great, really, because it was nice to get that temperature drop that we needed. Yeah. Cause, like, it's really, it's a bit cooler. And it was nice, and then it was like, oh, it's terrible. Well, um, as soon as I saw a new river, I'm like, oh, thank God for that. I'll see you again in Vegas at some point, but I'm not sure when. <laughs> again, if I was going to go to Vegas, I would just um, go and see my friend Vicky, um, go and play bingo, <laughs> and have a few cocktails, and that's about it. I mean, I wouldn't be going to the strip joints every time I go. It's, it's, for me, it's just a novelty one-off, because I can say, well, I went to Vegas, I went to a strip joint, did that, being there, that kind of crap, right? It's easy. That's it. I wouldn't need to do that every single time I went. Concerts. I can't go and watch concerts. Again, it's too much. Energy. I can't even go and watch yeah. a concert in normal um, everyday life. I couldn't even go to Phoenix and watch concerts. It's too many people. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what there is. And plus the lighting with me now, it's like different now than it used to be. I mean, yeah. sometimes I can't deal with the lights like I used to be able to deal with it. 
So, I mean, and that's why when Burton Cummings comes back to Vegas, it's going to be questionable where I can get it if I I, I really want to go, but it could well, there's be. Only one way to find out if you're, there's only one way to find out. Yeah, if you're, and I'm, I'm definitely going to try it the first yeah. time. I and mean, he usually does two or three shows when he's here. I usually hit them all. So, and, and I'll know by the first show. What when he goes back to Vegas? Yeah. Well, if you go, if you if, next time he comes to Vegas, then I'll go to Vegas. I'll come with you. We'll drive again. Yeah. I'll go and play bingo while you go to the concert, and then I'll go and sit down and have a few drinks with Vicky. Well, you can come in too and see it too. I can't go and see a concert. Okay. I can't do concerts. That level of energy is bad enough, but going well, to a concert of concert. I, I don't think it's, it would be. The, I think the energy would be different with his concerts it's than, not, it's than not, the, it's the not other to ones. Do the energy it's okay. to do with the level of high levels of the amount of people in one place. Yeah. Too many mixture of energies. When I go to the cinema, I have to go to the cinema at certain times. If the cinema is going to be full. I have to sit right at the back and I can't always go to the cinema too, because if it's a full room, it's like, and you remember I'm tapped into like telepathy and everything. So I'm not feeling, but I'm also like, God, some of these people need fucking psychiatric help. <laughs> <laughs> or some of these people yeah. really should be in jail. Yeah. <laughs> How are they still roaming? It's, it's, I don't like it. You know, you know, it's a bit of a care sometimes in some ways, but that's energy. Yeah. Um, what did I say to you when we were, driving around and I went, God, Jesus. I came out to that strip joint. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, that, that was There's a few people that should be not in jail prison. That, that was a whole new experience. I think it was like, it yeah. was, it was a different time for me because what I've learned over the last year and 15 months or so, I went in there with a different attitude. And when I left it, like it didn't, it didn't really phase me, but I knew what I dealt with. So I, I can't think I came out okay with it. You, know? you did really well, actually, because like I say, when I was, as we were leaving Las Vegas, leaving Las Vegas, <laughs> I said, I said, oh, you, I see you're still smiling. <laughs> I'd completely lost my smile. I was like energetically exhausted. I just felt like I'd been zapped of my energy because I knew like, okay, I cannot come to Vegas for more than two days, one night only. That's, you know, two nights was just too much. It was like, okay, that's enough. Um, no, because that was just too much. And it ended up, and thankfully, I, I preserved so much prior to going in because I knew I was going to get energy zapped by the energy vampires anyway. But I didn't really, by the time I'd, I'd managed it quite well, but I was also feeling like I'm really starting to feel like my energy is draining right now. And then I, and I, as yeah. I'm driving and I looked at Rick and I said, and you're okay. And he went, Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, you're still smiling. And he went, yeah, I went, you did, <laughs> you, you did really well. I got to get the hell out of this place. <laughs> I got to get out of Vegas. But, so I was completely dry. And, and so she's been doing this for years and years and oh, years. And I, I, I'm kind of new at what actually what we're doing. So she, she can pick up a lot more energy than I can. Oh, God, yeah. And she can sense it more. And that's probably, that's exactly what happened to you this last couple of days. I can feel it a mile away. Yeah. Like something's coming. Oh, and if I don't, if I don't feel it, I'll smell it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, but overall, Vegas was a, it was a good learning trip because I went in there with a different attitude this time with it. And I, I knew it was going to be kind of a road trip to, for me to learn stuff because I'm going in differently with looking at it this time. And it was good. I think I I, I think I did okay. Yeah. yeah, you did. You did really well. I mean, on the sinister side of it, for what I do with my field for a living, one of the main things I do as, as a parapsychologist, um, the one thing that I was working with energy, tapping into energy, the one thing that was really hard for me as an empath as well and connect and I, it was very hard for me not to connect to victims when I'm working on cold cases. Um, I had to turn that off. Had that been turned on, I'd have been screwed because I'll tell you one thing about Vegas, whether you're in, in it on the outskirts of it, it is a freaking burial site. There is a lot of energy that is just, it, it's it, to me, it's like, hmm, there's just a lot of death like a lot of energy has not transitioned over. And I was, I didn't have enough to start transitioning souls in a place like that, which is quite mm. sad, really. Um, I mean, and Vegas has had a lot of bad energy for years because yeah. you know, obviously the mob ran it for decades. Oh, God, yeah. But so just, I, that's not going to be great energy anyway. No. 
I mean, I felt that pretty much as soon as I sort of started entering the, I'm like, oh God, thank God I'm switched off, not open for business for that. It was too much, but I could feel it. Doesn't mean it wasn't the way trying to sort of tap into the energy field going, oh, I need help. And it's like, I can't, no. Um, it's like, yeah, that's the sinister side of, for what I do, that was the most sinister side of Las Vegas is it's just one big burial ground in the freaking middle of the desert. That's not good. So it was good. It was good. Overall, it was good. It was a good learning experience. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad it came down the way it did. Yeah. So like I say, I mean, I don't think there's anything more. I mean, that's pretty much our review on, on Vegas for, as a first timer. Um, energetically, that's my review. But if you're thinking of going, just be vigilant. Um, and like Vicky was saying in the first episode too, from Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights, like three months getting really dodgy. Um, but other than that, it's, you still need to be aware of what's your surroundings anyway, regardless. So pretty much, you know, and just be careful, just be vigilant. It's, yeah. it, it doesn't really matter where you go. The only I think the only difference with Vegas is everything is just that you have such a, a small area in the grand scheme of things with too many people. So you, there's a higher risk of issues and problems. So I think that's what, that's really the be all and end all of Las Vegas. Otherwise enjoy the lights and enjoy everything and don't mortgage your houses for the love of God. <laughs> really don't be mortgaging away your, if you're saving up for your kids college phase, don't, don't be gambling those away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? <laughs> So, yeah, it was, it was a good, I, I, I totally enjoyed this trip. Even I did different stuff than I normally do, but it was perfect. It was, it was good. Yep. And then you can go to Vegas like me and go, ah, <laughs> let's just enjoy it. And then let's get the hell away. Let's, let's leave. Let's go to Las Vegas and then let's leave Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> well, she, she was so excited to go there. I was. She was a oh, Vegas so. baby. And then, then we get there and all this stuff comes down and. Yeah, well, as soon as the energy started changing and I was absorbed, it's like, oh, God. <sighs> okay. It's okay. Keep going. I've got this. It's just like major meditation. So, oh, I had to take some little power naps and stuff, but it's not enough. It's just too much energy. Very low vibrational, dense energy, unfortunately. <laughs> and, you know, when you're, when you're highly evolved, you feel it. But you can deal with it and you can, you can still live a normal life. It's yeah. just you can't do. It's just There's just things that you can't do. I mean, because you'll just be like, okay, I'm done. I'm drained. That's it. The energy vampires have zapped me. I need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I need a complete rechange. Yeah. Or then you need the ocean for just major um, regrounding. But that's yeah, grounding like, definitely helps. Yeah. Definitely helps. But other than that, I think we're going to leave our little review on Vegas. Um, we didn't hit, I didn't hit it enough to not go back. So that, that's one good thing. Um, but again, just be vigilant when you're there and just, you know, be aware of your surroundings and, you know, keep, keep your purses on the front of you so you can see them. That's a little tip too. Don't be having your bags wide open. The one thing I was seeing that I've, I've got to say is so weird is this, I don't know, a lot of women, you've got to start monitoring your bags properly, ladies. You're just not switched on. You, you should not be walking around places like that with your bags wide open and your wallets on show. It's the fastest way to get mugged, right? And you probably don't even realize you've, you've just lost your wallet. You, 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 it's an open invitation. I don't understand that, but I saw so much of that. It's like, oh, for the love of God, close your bag and stop having it behind your side or the back of your, I only have to go like that and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> it's so strange. Yeah. I don't, So people are so complacent. It's very bizarre. That's the fastest way to lose your credit cards and your money and your identity and everything. Stop it. You know, it's, well, I can't tell you what to do, but I wouldn't do that. There you go. That's one thing I was like, wow, I was um, amazed by. Like, yeah. it didn't matter where we went, everywhere we went, where we were walking, whether we're eating, it was just like everyone's women's bags are just wide open for the world to come and go, hi, hello there. Yeah. I'm like, hey, my hand literally locked to me and <laughs> I don't care because it's yeah. crazy. I was just, wow, it's, it's yeah. complacency is, is, is unreal. So it's definitely interesting. I'll say that. Yes. Interesting times we do live in too. Yeah. 
So we hope to see you again very soon. Um, I'll hopefully have a, a new guest. I mean, I, like I say, my table chats are more varied now. I've got a different variation of people, which I absolutely love. Um, oh, also series one, they, this, they, they're no longer available to watch. So unfortunately, after I was real talk, table chats, etc., that's no longer available to view. So I don't need to get into it. And I don't, and it's just, just a personal reasons, but they've now been taken down completely. So, other than that, I will see you for another um, after hours or just a turbo chat in general. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. <laughs>